after all in addition to our two um, individuals that this park is named after the real reason why we're here in addition to that is of course is to recognize our Duggan school students how about a big round of applause yeah and after we get done speaking hint hint there'll be plenty of opportunity for lots of ice cream My name is Neil O'Leary and I'm the mayor of Waterbury and it's a, indeed an honor to be here today. Um, starting with, of course, our students at Duggan School and their principal, Melissa DiGiovanni. Hi, Melissa, thank you. Today is a very, very special day to honor two very special people who served this city with distinction and pride and honor for many years. Lieutenant Vincent Riddick, the brother of Chief Vernon Riddick, the son of Mr. Vernon Riddick, and the sister of Bianca Lazaro Riddick, the nephew of Ruby Coleman, who is very special to all of us, worked in the Waterbury Police Department for decades, the cousin of Renee Coleman, sister-in-law, Sandy Riddick. Vincent Riddick was taken from us much too early. He was a rising star in the Waterbury Police Department, no question about it. His smile would light up a room anywhere, his demeanor, His love of this neighborhood, Brooklyn neighborhood, was amazing. He was a neighborhood police officer. Even as he went up through the ranks, he continued to work closely with our second honoree for the day, Lisa Stokes, whose mom, Barbara, and seven brothers are here with us today, I'm told. Donald, Kenneth, Robert, Kevin, William, Michael, and Christopher. Together, Lieutenant Riddick and Lisa Stokes had an incredible love for the Brooklyn section of this city, which we're here now. They did amazing work together. They were close friends, and we were so so saddened and devastated when Vin Riddick um, became ill and succumbed to his illness. And I remember dozens of conversations with Lisa about her wish to honor Vincent Riddick by building a park in his name right here and to honor him for his commitment to not only the Brooklyn neighborhood and of course the Waterbury Police Department, but the city of Waterbury at large. And, you know, uh, I was always so amazed by her dedication and her caring and love for uh, Ben Riddick and, and all of police officers who worked this neighborhood for years. And she was an amazing woman. As I mentioned to you before, Ben Riddick was really a rising star in the Waterbury Police Department. Honestly, um, you know, his brother became chief, and I always wondered which one of them was going to become chief first. And, you know, the truth is, um, you know, his loss impacted us in, in, in measurable ways. Um, but it was an eye opener for all of us to take a deep breath. And, um, and then when Lisa passed after him recently, you know, take another deep breath and say, you know what, let's focus on the things that really are really important. And let's focus on the things that were important to the two of them, specifically the Brooklyn neighborhood. As you know, you know, we have been very dedicated as much as humanly possible, starting with the renovation of Duggan School, but working with the Brooklyn Neighborhood Association and uh, all the stakeholders here in honoring uh, not only the people who came through Brooklyn, certainly a huge Lithuanian population, uh, you know, people who were so meaningful 
uh, throughout the 20s and 30s and 40s and 50s here, you know, people whose lives were dictated by working in the brass mills and other places uh, to make Waterbury what Waterbury is. And, you know, uh, Lisa and Vincent believed in that history strongly and really motivated city leaders, elected officials, Board of Aldermen, Board of Education people in different ways and meaningful ways. The one thing about Lisa that I've said it on the car ride here, Barbara, is Lisa had a way about her. She knew what she wanted. She knew what was strong and right for this neighborhood. She believed in this neighborhood and will always believe in this neighborhood. But as I said to people in my car on the way here, Lisa Velez was a person who would walk into my office, whether it was deputy chief, police chief, or mayor, and leave happy. And the reason why is her asks were pretty big, sometimes, but the way she delivered the message was with respect and compassion and love for her neighborhood. And it was impossible to say no. It was, it was impossible. And I wish there were others who had that type of demeanor because they could make such a difference, not only in Waterbury, but we all know, across the state and across the country. So I'll call on first with the people who helped make this park responsible. And before I go any further, I, I definitely want to acknowledge the Waterbury Environmental Health Fund who came up with the $50,000 to purchase this property. Thank you. <laughs> Next came the environmental remediation to the tune of 168,000 that was funded by Naugatuck Valley Council of Governments. They're here as well. <laughs> Next came the park design, City of Waterbury, $60,000. And finally, the construction, we'll hear from our friends from HUD and the Federal Community Development Block Grant, $1.2 million. So the first speaker will talk a little bit about the funding and how this got off the ground. And his name is Chris Bandecki, and he's a community development grant director. Come on up, Chris. Thank you, man. Good afternoon. I'd like to thank Mayor O'Leary, <clears throat> the Board of Aldermen, and the members of the Citizens Advisory Committee for their support of this important project. I'd also like to thank the Department of Housing and Urban Development who provided $1.2 million in community development block grant funding. Without their support, we would not be here today. This park is truly a testament to the value that community development dollars can add to a community. CDBG funds gave the city the opportunity to transform a once blighted lot into this beautiful park that you see today. Thanks to these dollars and the city's commitment, members of this neighborhood and the community will get to enjoy this park for years to come. Again, thank you, Mayor O'Leary and the city for your support of this project, and my office is honored to be a part of it. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, you heard Chris mention the Department of Housing and Urban Development and the Field Office Director in the State of Connecticut, Ms. Suzanne Piacentini is with us here today. Come on up, Susan. Suzanne. Hi everyone, thank you Mayor and Chris and your entire team for including HUD at today's event. It was such a beautiful day and a beautiful park. These are the days where I love leaving my desk and coming to see what's being done with our funds across the state. Again, my name is Suzanne Piacentini and I'm HUD's Connecticut Field Office Director. I'm joined by Alana Cable, Alana Wave, um, who's our Director of Community and Planning and Development at HUD and she and her staff provide advice and guidance to communities like Waterbury every day to try to get them to spend their money, invest in their communities. Since 1974, HUD's Community Development Block Grant funds have been supporting community development activities which help our local communities build stronger neighborhoods and more resilient communities. And what an example of that. Waterbury annually receives these funds and wisely combine those funds with special coronavirus funds to invest, as you heard, $1.2 million for the construction of this incredible, incredible park. HUD is pleased to join the city 
It's Park Department, the Naugatuck Valley Council of Governments, Waterbury Environmental Health Fund, the Community Development Department to create this outdoor recreation space, providing many opportunities for safe play with adequate social distancing. We are happy that this beautiful park, um, named in honor of two local citizens who clearly mean so much to the neighborhood, has been made available for your community and for people to share for years and years to come as you look at our little young folks here. So congratulations, Waterbury, and again, thanks for having us here. Thank you so much, Suzanne. I now call on Senator Joan Hartley for comments and words. Senator? Uh, what, what a thrill it is to be here, and the sun is shining on all of us. Um, to the incredible work of this administration, um, you know, we just heard about the investment into community um, by CDGB and many other revenue sources. That's what this administration has done. And so when we had leaders in the community like Lisa and like Vin, um, who uh, invested their whole lives in our community, how could um, we not follow through with this? And so I wanna thank the mayor, this administration, and all of the partners, this community, um, for never taking their foot off the gas um, to have this happen um, because it has it has been a project um, of love and it has taken some time but it is all worth it and so I want to see who the first one is to go down that slide. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. How Thank about you? you? <laughs> it won't be me. I'm going to be at the ice cream truck. <laughs> now, <laughs> The next uh, speaker, uh, Congresswoman Hayes, could not be here today because, as you know, there's an awful lot going on in Washington this week. But we have uh, representatives here from our office who'd like to present us with a uh, proclamation or citation. Janine. Thank you, Mayor O'Leary. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for everyone that turned out to celebrate this beautiful achievement. And thank you to everybody that made this happen from the federal partners to the state partners to the municipal partners. This is absolutely gorgeous and this neighborhood could not be more deserving. Congresswoman Hayes is working hard every day for this district. Today she is in Washington as she often is, but myself, Janine Lupo, her district director and my colleague, Megan Perry are here too honor the families that this park is so aptly named for. So I will read her note to you. Special congressional recognition is presented to the family of Lieutenant Vincent L. Riddick in honor and memory of Lieutenant Vincent L. Riddick and his tireless work for the Brooklyn community. As a 12 year veteran of the Waterbury Police Department, Lieutenant Riddick was a well-known figure in the Brooklyn community. His dedicated service to improve community relations and prevent crime in his beloved neighborhood will be the legacy he leaves behind to be remembered by all whose lives he touched. Today, I join family, friends, and the greater Waterbury community in dedication of the park at 909 Bank Street in memory of Lieutenant Vincent L. Riddick and Lisa Stokes Velez. May their names stand as an inspiration to all to enjoy the park for generations to come. I stand in humble admiration and with eternal gratitude. Congresswoman Johanna Hayes. Awesome. And I have one for In special recognition, in special congressional recognition, presented to the family of Lisa Stokes Velez in honor and memory of Lisa Stokes Velez and her tireless work for the Brooklyn community. Lisa Stokes Velez was born and raised in the Brooklyn neighborhood and took pride in her service to the community. As the president of the Waterbury Neighborhood Council and the Brooklyn Neighborhood Association, Ms. Velez collaborated with city and state legislators to acquire the funding to purchase and construct the park and leaves behind a legacy that will be remembered by all whose lives she touched. Today I join family, friends, and the greater Waterbury community in dedication of the park at 909 Bank Street in memory of Lieutenant Vincent L. Riddick and Lisa Stokes Velez. May their names stand as an inspiration to all who enjoy this park for generations to come. I stand in humble admiration with eternal gratitude, Congresswoman Johanna Hayes.
Okay, thank you. Next, Representative Ron Napoli, come on up. Say a few words. Thank you, Mayor. It's an honor to be here today, and I want to thank the mayor and stakeholders who made this happen. And we know that parks like this really improve the quality of life in our cities, and the Brooklyn community is so lucky to have such a nice park. And we were so lucky to have people like Vin Riddick and Lisa Stokes in our community, and their hard work and their effort to make Waterbury and this neighborhood a much better place. And a few hours from now, we'll all leave here, and there'll be hundreds of kids here. And that's a wonderful way to continue their legacy. So thank you very much, and enjoy your new park. Thank you. Next, we'll call upon Representative Jerry Reyes. Come on up, Jerry. Good afternoon, everybody. I'll be brief in my remarks as I see you're taking in the sun pretty good here. It's a beautiful day in Brooklyn neighborhood. It's always an honor and privilege to be here, and I want to acknowledge my good friends from the Brooklyn Neighborhood Association that without the work that you guys did under Lisa's leadership, we wouldn't be here either. And it's been a long time coming since we lost our park on the other side of the highway. We've been talking about a park for Brooklyn, and this is just a small snippet of what's to come. I know that there is going to be more work done here in Brooklyn. Mayor O'Leary has been noted as the mayor that's getting things done. In Brooklyn neighborhood, you're going to be the benefactors of this particular park and more to come. I just wanted to uh, thank uh, everybody who participated in this because I had the privilege of knowing both of them personally and working with both of them personally. And unbeknownst to me, I had no idea that Lisa was so sick. And even while she was sick, we were still working on this Finn Riddick Park and uh, the Brooklyn Neighborhood Association uh, members know that we sat here many nights down here at the, at the church rectory and uh, talking about the park and the funding and so forth. So first of all, I wanna thank Mayor O'Leary for his leadership and then everybody who else who put in their piece of work and their piece of funding to make this reality for the kids of the future. And with that, I'm going to uh, just quickly acknowledge the uh, Riddick family. If I could have the member, uh, leader of the Riddick family and the leader of the Stokes family, please. I want to, can I, may I have uh, Senator Hartley and uh, Representative Knappen, may I have you real quick? Because it's on behalf of the entire Waterbury delegation. And so, I'm not going to read the proclamation, but each one here is made out in in uh, in honor of the Stokes Velez family and the Riddick family for their contributions to this beautiful Brooklyn neighborhood and the city of Waterbury. Thank you very much. If you guys can just pose that way, you can just show them, show them that way. If you can stand here, Vince, stand right here, Ms. Stokes, stay right here, stay right next to each other. So you can see. Thank you. Um, yeah. To my girlfriend. If you guys can just all look that way. If you can all look that way. All right, okay, there it is. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor O'Leary. Thank you, Jerry. You're welcome. Next, I call on, it's a pleasure, of course, to call on the president of our Board of Aldermen, Paul Penaruski. Come on up, Paul. Thank you very much. It's a great honor to be here today at the dedication of this park. One more step in the revitalization of Brooklyn, which was a long neglected uh, part of Waterbury, but we've taken great steps to, to make some improvements here and to uh, move this area forward. And I'd like to acknowledge my colleagues from the Board of Aldermen who are here with me. We have our Majority Leader Alderman Brunelli is with us today. Our Park uh, Liaison Alderman Salvio is here, Alderwoman Cavallo, Alderwoman Zimmerman, Alderman Markey, and Alderman Matthews are all here as well today. Oh, and uh, <laughs> Alderman Hunter is here today, right? Oh, <laughs> and Alderman uh, Weaver is here today. I didn't see you guys sitting there. So we almost have a quorum here with us today, so. I can't think of uh, two uh, more deserving people to have this park dedicated to their memory, people who were so dedicated to Waterbury and to this part 
uh, of Waterbury, uh, Brooklyn, and it's great to see them being honored here today. And I'm going to be very quick because I know these young kids and I think the mayor are all looking for the ice cream. It's getting warm out here. So all I want to say is I hope as these young people get to use this park in the future, they can all be inspired by the example that Lisa and Vincent have set and that they will also be motivated to work very hard for their city off into the future. So it's great to see you all. Thank you for coming out. Thank you, Mr. President. Next, I call on Mr. Jerry Covino, the Brooklyn Neighborhood Association President. Come on up, Jerry. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of the Brooklyn Neighborhood Association, I would like to thank everyone for attending this afternoon and keeping the memory of Lieutenant Riddick and Lisa Stokes Velez alive in this Brooklyn neighborhood. They would have been so proud today to see this park come to fruition after so many years of hard work. I would like to extend a sincere thank you to the many organizations and individuals that work directly with the Neighborhood Association to make this day a success. The City of Waterbury, our state and local representatives. I would like to thank the Brooklyn Neighborhood Association our officers that are here today, Antoinette Covino, Frank Perella, Eric Barkas, and I also would like to acknowledge Lex and Laura Nesta, who have been on this journey with us from the very start. The families of Lieutenant Vincent Riddick and Lisa Stokes Velez, the Waterbury Development Corporation, the Waterbury Neighborhood Council, Art and Elaine Dens, and the Riverside Cemetery Association, Martin Begnall. And especially for the hard work that Lieutenant Riddick and Lisa invested in this neighborhood to make it what it is today. Thank you again. Nice job, Jerry. Thank you. Next, I call on Vincent's brother, West Hartford Police Chief and former Waterbury Police Chief and career Waterbury Police Officer, Chief Vernon Riddick. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, what a glorious day for, for those who know Vin. Those were his famous words. Uh, I want to thank the Mayor, the Park Department, the Park Commission, my Brooklynites, Brooklynites. <laughs> I can't hear you. And to the youth, as I stand here and I wondered and pondered what to talk about, I'd say, what would Vin say? So speaking for him, he would say, one, I love my family. Two, I am loyal and I love my friends. Three, I love Waterbury PD. Four, I love my city. And five, without and definitely not least is I love Brooklyn as I prepared for this and Sergeant Renee Harvey sent me information I was astounded how many letters Vin had received for his accomplishments and just having a good heart as I looked through on the email I was almost brought to tears because there were so many things that he had done that I didn't know he had done and I'm sure my family didn't know and I owe you an email actually you guys are supposed to be up here too by the way stand up <laughs> And at the end, without giving up too many secrets, the fact that we have a park here, first Vin would say, I can't believe you chose me because you obviously don't know me. <laughs> and those of us who know Vin know exactly what I'm talking about. And number two, as we grew up, the Riddick family, the Stokes family, Velez family, growing up here, first of all, it's the Stokes clan. You mess with one of them, you're messing with a team. <laughs> we would have to, in the kids' blocky ears, you know, for our recreation, we'd have to break in to the Brooklyn, to Duggan School to go swimming. Now, the janitor left the door cracked for us to play basketball from time to time, but we weren't, weren't supposed to be there. And we had, if you remember, the old Brooklyn Park. So we had to walk all the way from here down to the Brooklyn Park just to have a sprinkler. And we often wondered, what would we have if we could have a park right here in Brooklyn? 
And then besides that, remember the old Duggan School in the back? We used to hang out back there. A lot of firsts happened back there, and I'll let your imagination go. <laughs> that being said, and in closing, on behalf of my father, the patriarch, and my sister, Bianca, isn't she gorgeous? <laughs> you see where the looks went? Let me pull my pocketbook out and give him and there's an ongoing family joke. One, Vin called me the smartest dumb person he'd know. He called me the big dummy. That was his nickname. And then the family, although I'm six foot six, there is Big Vern, and I am Little, little Vern. Vern. <laughs> Period. That being said, Mayor, everybody else, thank you so much. And by the way, Mayor, you said who would be the first person on that slide? Vin already went down it. <laughs> God bless you all. Thank you. Before I bring up our next speaker, I'd just like to acknowledge some folks that are here, and if I leave someone out, I apologize. Uh, but we do have our state's attorney, Maureen Platt, here, and our uh, supervisory state's attorney, Don Thurkelson. Thank you so much. We have our school superintendent, Dr. Verna Ruffin, is here. Thank you, Dr. Ruffin. We have retired. Representative Reginald Beeman here with us. Thanks, Reg. I think we covered all the elected. Thank you, Paul, for doing that for me. Um, we have a dear friend of all of ours who is here and a very dear friend of the Riddick family, Dr. Jim Gatling is here, retired from now incorporated. So I'll just say a couple of words in closing before I turn it over to Lieutenant Stokes. So as I mentioned in the opening remarks, you know, when you look at people like Ben Riddick and Lisa Stokes, you can't help but look at their parents. The Riddick story is remarkable as Mr. Riddick was left Unfortunately, Mrs. Riddick passed on. When Vernon was 11, Vincent was nine, and Bianca was two and a half. And Mr. Riddick, who has been an amazing uh, leader for all of us, and his dignity and demeanor um, and handling what happened uh, in 2010 with Vin really caught the honor and respect of every police officer in the city of Waterbury. And uh, I've asked him several times to adopt me, but I haven't been successful. I'm still hoping. I think his kids are blocking it. <laughs> uh, I don't blame him. But uh, at the end of the day, I, I, it's been a real pleasure and honor to get to know Mr. Riddick, and, and he's been a, a great role model for not only the Riddick children, but for the community at large. And moving on to Lisa, you know, I, and I meant every word I said about Lisa. She was had this remarkable way of getting things done. I really believe God took her way too early, and I, I, I think that her work was far from done here in the city of Waterbury. You know, when she passed in 2019, it really caught us all by surprise. None of us really knew that she was that ill. Uh, it, it really was shocking. I can't ever forget it. Uh, the phone call when we talked, I just called in to check in with her and then she told me the news of where she was and, and what was happening to her. And I could not believe that her demeanor and strength and she never even wavered. Her voice didn't crack. She only had weeks to live and she was in intensive care. When I called her, I thought I was going to catch her at home and, uh, you know, she she kept this thing pretty private, but I will say in her, I think she would appreciate this, especially you see me wearing a hat and I got about five uh, coats of sunscreen on. And I say it because we have all these beautiful children from Duggan School here. Wear sunscreen, stay out of the sun. Skin cancer is the root of many evils and uh, you know, Lisa handled the illness with enormous dignity and strength and courage, but 
you know, these are things that we need to learn from, right? And, you know, we miss her, and I know Barbara misses her and her, her seven brothers. Can you imagine? I, I, it wasn't hard to figure out how she was so strong and driven. I mean, can you imagine being the only girl in a house with seven brothers? Well, one thing you knew for sure is she would always be safe. But the other thing is she probably didn't get away with much when she was a teenager with all these guys around her. But, you know, the Stokes boys are well known not only in Brooklyn but throughout the city, not only for their public service but for their, their care and devotion to their family, especially Lisa when she was ill, and uh, their beautiful mother, Barbara, and, you know, just people we should constantly emulate ourselves after. So the closing remarks will be delivered by Lieutenant Michael Stokes, of course, Waterbury PD, and he will share his thoughts and comments with us now. Thank you. All righty. Hello. Thank you all for coming out today um, to celebrate this occasion. Like the mayor said, I'm Michael Stokes. Yes, I'm a lieutenant with the Waterbury Police Department. I've been here for over 21 years. Um, I've had the pleasure of serving the citizens of Waterbury. Um, it's going to be tough. Um, Lisa meant a lot to me and, and my family, um, and my seven brothers, and my mother. Um, I'm going to kind of skip a lot of the introductions they, they've been said. I just want to um, thank uh, Police Chief Spagnola and Chief Fire Chief Ballou and all the firemen and police officers that are here today. Um, as you see, people wearing purple. That was Lisa's favorite color, um, so we wanted to celebrate her today. Um, I'll just point out, you know, thank you to the uh, Brooklyn Neighborhood Association, the Cavino family, Frank Perella, the Nesta family. They really... Um, were great friends to Lisa and they carried this dream alive. They kept it going um, to get this park uh, built and I appreciate them. And everybody else, um, I don't need to say everybody's names again, but thank you, thank you, thank you for making this happen for Lisa and Vinny. Vinny was like uh, an extra Stokes. He was the eighth brother. Um, he was at everything. You know, Lisa, they were, they were inseparable. They were at every party. Um, Vinny was always the life of the party. Same thing with Lisa. Um, all you can say is love. You know, both of them just had love for everybody, the, the community. Um, I want to thank Mayor O'Leary uh, personally. Um, his continuous support for the park and uh, the countless phone calls to my mother with progress reports and uh, answering any questions that he had. Um, he's a true leader. He was definitely there for our family in our time of need, and he really helped us make this happen. Thank you. I also like to thank my family, my mother, Barbara, my brothers, I won't say all their names, uh, Lisa's daughter, Crystal. Um, they gave me this honor today. I, I don't know why they picked me, but I'm up here today, you know, for them, and I'm gonna try to do this without shedding a tear or two. Um, just a little quick history. I don't know if anybody knows, you know, a lot of things about Brooklyn. Um, so a lot of people think Brooklyn um, was originated from the people who immigrated here from Brooklyn, New York, because it was very similar. Um, you could imagine back in the 1700s, you're, you're, you got a community by the water. Water was very valuable. Um, so most likely, we got our name from people from Brooklyn, New York. Um, just a quick history. Um, at the height of Brooklyn, there was five grammar schools, three drug stores, three theaters, eight bakeries, two breweries, a library, a firehouse, a YMCA, 22 bars, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Those who grew up in Brooklyn remember the sports teams, the social activities um, sponsored by the churches and social organizations in the neighborhood. Um, children played by the Naugatuck River. Um, there was actually woods on Charles Street. Um, the jukebox at Lolly's. I, I don't remember that. I'm sure some of you people do. And Dish Night at the Capitol Theater. That was just some of the things back then. I'm going to quote uh, Frank Perella here. Um, Brooklyn, it was self-sustaining neighborhood. We had a downtown Brooklyn uh, where there was a movie house. There were markets. You could buy clothes there. You didn't have to go out of the neighborhood for anything. 
and you know Brooklyn like many neighborhoods has changed um, over the years but we're coming back you, you, you see the uh, Duggan school that place is phenomenal and now we have this park so Brooklyn is coming back when I was asked to do this I pondered about all the accomplishments that Lisa achieved but then I said um, this should really be about who Lisa was the loving mother the best sister ever her mother's favorite daughter you guys get that now right <laughs> she's the only one um, she was a true champion for what was right um, her love for the city of Waterbury and her bro beloved Brooklyn all right little about Lisa she was born and raised in Brooklyn she lived there for most of her life as a matter of fact that third floor was her first apartment she lived in when she left the house when she was 18 or 19. That's a long story, but uh, I just remember we went on a family vacation. We came back and Lisa was living over there. <laughs> <laughs> so she was, she had that attitude and, and you know, self-determination back then to do what she wanted to do. Um, like was said, Lisa, uh, you know, eight kids, seven boys, one girl. Lisa was third in the order. Um, Lisa was always there for her brothers. Um, she took a back seat early on. Um, she followed all of our sports careers and, and our work careers, and uh, she was our biggest cheerleader. She was always there for us. Um, after we got older and hung up our cleats, that's when Re Lisa really began to shine. Um, she was the president of the Brooklyn no Neighborhood Association for, I believe, 23 plus years. Um, she later became the president of the Citywide Neighborhood Council. Um, these are time-consuming jobs with no pay. This is volunteer stuff. Like, this really shows her commitment to the city of Brooklyn, in this, or neighborhood in Brooklyn and in the city of Waterbury. She was proud of her Lithuanian heritage. Um, she was in a, even selected to be the Lithuanian mayor of the day. She also received a, a distinguished award from the United States Attorney um, for citizens engage, engagement and supporting community policing. She always supported the police department and the fire departments. There's just too many uh, accomplishments to list. Um, Lisa was tough. She was a fierce negotiator, like the mayor said. Um, she knew how to get things done, much like Mayor O'Leary. Um, she was a doer. She got things done. Um, she didn't care what side of the political aisle you were on. Um, she just wanted to do what's right and, and get the task completed. Lisa also liked to have fun. Um, she used to run our Brooklyn neighborhood casino bus trips. Those were legendary. Um, we raised a lot of money and we had a great time. Um, she also liked playing cards, setback um, with family and friends. And she always had parties at her house on North Leonard Street. Um, and everybody was welcome, you know. She invited anybody. Anybody who walked by, you know, North Leonard Street, they, they were welcome to come in. Sometimes I was like, who is that? But, um, <laughs> She didn't care. She welcomed everybody. She trusted everybody. She loved, she loved Brooklyn. Um, the Christmas season was always special to Lisa. Um, she always made sure they had the Christmas tree lighting. And she always made sure Santa Claus was there. She always made sure any kid in attendance had a present. All right. We're almost getting to the end. Uh, one thing I always remember about Lisa saying is that the children of Brooklyn, they need a park. You know, she always say that. It's just not right. They need a park. Um, the Brooklyn kids need a safe place to play, you know. Then when her beloved dear friend, you know, Lieutenant Benny Riddick passed away, it lit a fire inside her. Um, she made it her mission. It was definitely her mission to get this park done and get it named after Benny. Lisa, I know you're listening. You did it. You did it. Mission complete. You did it. In closing, I would just like to read a poem that I really think will really sum up today's event. Um, we can never lose sight that we lost two great people, Lisa and Vinny, to cancer. Uh, they were taken from us way too early. Just imagine for a second what they could have accomplished if they were still here today. All right. The poem is called When God Took You Home. I'm going to do my best. Uh, God saw you getting tired, and a cure was not to be. So he put his arms around you and whispered, come to me. 
With careful eyes, we watched you, and we saw you pass away. Although we loved you dearly, we could not make you stay. A golden heart stopped beating, hard-working hands at rest. God broke our hearts to prove to us he only takes the best. It broke our hearts to lose you, but you didn't go alone. For part of us went with you when God took you home. Thank you. God bless everyone. Okay. Are the Duggan students ready? Would you like to go help us cut the ribbon and then go down the slide and then have ice cream? All right. Let's do it. Thank <laughs> you. 